Welcome to my PowerPoint on my favorite decks ever. Starting with Death Knight, we have Even Death Knight. This one should have been obvious to basically everyone ever. If you've watched any of my videos, uh, Even Death Knight is just, it's great. The whole idea is that it is very strong at fighting for board because you have the one mana ghoul charge hero power, which, you know, gives you a 1-1 one, one ghoul with charge, dies in your turn for one mana. That being your hero power is actually very strong. It fights for board incredibly efficiently. It kills anything with one health, which matters a lot sometimes. And because it's in your hero power, it actually is just on demand. And you know what cards love on demand effects? Cards like Knife Juggler. Two mana, three, two. After you summon a minion, deal one damage to a random enemy. Knife Juggler used to be a really, really powerful and popular minion early on in the days of Hearthstone for a good long while. It even saw play as, like far into standard as like like witchwood when call to arms was printed i it might it might have even seen play after that but i can't i couldn't tell you i would not i did not play that much attention to standard since then i'm gonna be honest and especially not like with knife juggler like but knife juggler is just a really iconic card it's from classics just and the fact that you know having this hero power that summons a one one and is good instead of just summoning a one one does nothing it summons a one one that actually gets to fight for board to protect the knife juggler so it double synergizes there it makes use of sing along buddy very efficiently because well if you're already going to be pressing your hero power a lot you might as well get double action on that of course sing along buddy is a two mana one four mech your hero power triggers twice so you get the two one ones that also benefits your knife juggler and it gives you a lot of corpses usually you're playing a uh, triple and holy even death knight which does like to make use of corpses in cards like grave strength or lord marogar but i'm not talking about those today i'm talking about some other cards from this deck that i do like i really like horizon's edge it's the new it's a sorry it is a new location from the new expansion that is four mana five durability deal three damage randomly split among all enemies after a friendly minion dies reopen this it's almost like when you have a really easy to use uh, one mana instant body that can kill itself off, Horizon's Edge synergizes really well with the deck. Of course, you're running a lot of other cards that make Horizon's Edge really good, like Mining Casualties. Two mana, uh, Death Knight, Paladin, dual class spell. Summon two 1-1 one -one Silver and Recruits. With Death Rattle, summon a 1-1 one -one Frail Ghoul. The Frail Ghoul is the token from the Death Knight Hero Power. M Mining Casualties is just such a powerful card. It's genuinely seen play in like every single deck for both classes. It's so nice. It gives you a lot of little tokens to trade off for your Horizon's Edge. It gives you bodies to buff for your Grave Strength. It's just... It's just so, so good. I love Even Death Knight. Uh, I, I hit top 100 legend playing Even Death Knight and Marshall Lich King. I, I didn't finish. I never finished high legend, I'll be honest with you guys. But I hit top 100 legend playing Even Death Knight and Marshall Lich King. It was just so much fun. Even if you didn't have cards like this, even if back then you weren't running cards like Knife Juggler, it's still such an awesome deck. And I think that Even Death Knight, like, perfectly encapsulates, like, how a mid-range deck should be playable in Hearthstone. It is really good into other aggro decks while not being that great in the combo and it still can beat slow decks it's just i love i love it i love it so much and we have demon hunter so soul shard demon hunter is one of my favorite aggro decks like ever uh you you play one card a turn and then you punch your opponent in the face after you're done playing one card a turn it's so great uh, this is what I this is what I reminisce about when I think about like a face hunter th this kind of deck this style deck because that's what face hunter used to be face hunter used to be well you play one two like really cheap minions and then you top it off with cards that just like going face really efficiently like a Leroy like weapons and it's not anything special it's a really like basic like early like <laughs> I don't know how to describe it better this just feels like early face hunter that we everyone you know grew to love that liked playing hunter a really basic not too thought-provoking kind of aggro deck that likes that can value trade but doesn't need to or doesn't want to a lot of the time but it can and then just hits your opponent real good it's really fun it just is fun i don't know about i don't know man uh we have soul shard lapidary which is a five mana five five battle cry destroy a soul fragment in your deck to give your hero plus five attack Arrow Slicer, 4 mana, 4, 2 weapon. Battle Cry, shuffle 2 soul fragments into your deck. Shard Shatter Mystic, 3 mana, 3, 2. Battle Cry, destroy a soul fragment in your deck to deal 3 damage to all other minions. And Spirit Jailer, 1 mana, 1, 3 demon. Uh, that's also a Warlock dual class card. 
Battle Cry, shuffle two Soul Fragments in your deck. The Soul Fragments aren't really that important. They're like zero mana spells that cast when drawn and they heal you for two. Nothing crazy, nothing worse. It's not like that big of a deal. But the way that this is like one of the first really... One, it is one of the first alternate resource uh, kind of decks that we've had in Hearthstone. We've had a few, don't get me wrong, but this is one of the, the first ones that really was good, I kind of want to say, because this deck was really good. It was really, really good. It was like the best deck in the entire game at, at one point before I got like nerfed, right? It was really, really strong. You went face super well. You would curve a four mana weapon in like a four mana... 4-2 weapon into a 5-mana five 5-5 five, five that gave you plus 5 attack. Like, that is just a disgusting curve. Your opponent was taking 9 damage on turn 5 while you also developed a decently statted body minion. It's just absolutely disgusting, this deck. But it was fun. It just was. This is the kind of Hearthstone that I want to come back, right? Like, we don't see decks like this ever anymore. A deck like this could never exist in Hearthstone right now. It's so slow. It's so weak. It doesn't deal nearly enough damage that it needs to to be able to, like, kill its opponent. It's just... It's something. Like, it, it's so crazy that a card like Shard Shatter Mystic was so strong it got nerfed to four mana. Uh, and, like, it's just, like, not that crazy compared to some other cards that we've seen, like, overall. Like, yeah, it's a really strong onboard effect. Do not get me wrong. For an aggro deck, it's a really strong onboard effect. But we've seen cards like, uh, oh, there was the five mana, there was that five, or no, it was the four mana, four, four, that's like after you cast three spells, deal three damage to all, all enemies that came out in the Titans mini set. Like, what the fuck? What is that? Soul Shard Mystic had a harder condition because like, yeah, you had to play a Soul Shard card. You only really had like two that you could play uh, and Marrow Slicer, so you couldn't really play it on curve that efficiently. So this fucking... It's just, I mean, I'm not saying Soul Shard Mat or Shard Shatter Mystic was a bad card. Don't get me wrong. Really powerful card. It's just, in comparison to some cards we have now, this card just, like, feels like it's bad. I don't know. It, it's just, it's crazy. I love this deck. Also, if you guys have n don't know what the that Minecraft image is referencing, you're, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, it's in the guy's hot bar, if you know, you know. Then we have Druid. I love Even Druid. Even Druid's one of the coolest decks in the entire game. It's probably my favorite Even deck, at least right now. Uh, it's so, so, so simple. You press your hero power and you hit your opponent in the face. You play spells and you hit your opponent in the face. You ramp your hero power with two groovy cats and then your hero power does five damage. Then you play sing along buddy. Uh, sorry, I, I should write off groovy cat. Groovy cats, two mana, two one beast, battle cry and death battle. Your hero power gives your, or your hero power gives your hero one more attack this game. So you play the Groovy Cats, you get two of them out so you can have your Hero Power deal five damage. You have Sing Along Buddy, which already re uh, read off, which will double the effect of your Hero Power. You have Garrison Commander, which is two mana, two, three. Uh, you can use your Hero Power twice a turn, so you can do it twice. That's 20 damage for six mana. It's pretty good, uh, especially if you are able to play against decks that like can't really build taunts or heal in any way. You just start burning them down, and then once they get in range, you just hit them in the face really hard. It's it's a lot. It, it, it is a lot of fun. I'm going to be honest with you. I love it. It's so much fun. You also run a card pop. Sorry. Popular pixie. Two mana, two, three. Choose one. Refresh your hero power or your next one costs zero. So you can set up either a turn eight or turn nine lethal for 30 damage with just an additional pixie. Uh, if you're running coins, you can do it earlier. If you used one pixie to set up uh, the next turn, you can do it because it does make your hero power cost zero. So you could have uh, a turn eight kill that way. If you use trail mix, you can do it. There's a lot of different ways you can set up a 30 damage, uh, like burst with this deck. And it's just, it's so nice. Uh, before celestial projectionist was nerfed, this deck was actually significantly better because one of the big issues with this deck is that sometimes it just needs to actually kill you from full health from like 30 health. And it needs to be able to do that. And well, without celestial projectionist, you can't really consistently get copies of your groovy cat. And without Celestial Projectionist, you aren't having, like, four copies of Groovy Cat. You only have two copies of Groovy Cat, you know? So, it makes it so that instead of being able to have, like, a consistent way of getting five uh, attack from two Groovy Cats and doing better for more damage, without Projectionist, it's just a little sad. Uh, Celestial Projectionist was a two-mana three-two with Battle Cry. Choose a min or choose a friendly minion. Or add a temporary copy of it to your hand, so it would you know discard at the end of your turn. 
and we don't really have and it's three mana three three now because of fucking giant of toy house giant and rogue instead of just nerfing toy house giant they nerfed every fucking deck every deck because every deck like using celestial uh projectionist it was a good card it saw a lot of play but one deck in standard was too good with it so it got nerfed instead of just nerfing the deck when they also then later nerfed the deck instead so fucking crazy why do they do this shit then we have hunter Mwah. Mwah. oh it's a masterpiece whoever designed hunter during forge and the barons Mwah. Mwah. oh my god forge and the barons face hunter is the best hunter deck that has ever existed you could i mean you could say technically the united stormwind deck is also but like it, you it's because of the forge and the baron cards you have cards like barack kodo bane five mana three five battle cry draw one two and three cost spell on its own that doesn't seem that crazy right well you have to consider man crick three mana three four battle cry help man crick find his wife she was last seen somewhere in your deck the wife was a three mana spell so kodo bane would always tutor it because you didn't run any other three mana spells at the time because well, that was before aim shot was printed, but whatever. So Mana Crick was a guaranteed draw. The spell would then summon an, I think it was like Enraged Man Crick or whatever it was called, where he finds, he's like, oh, grass. So awesome. And he summons a three mana, three, 10. You heard me right. Three mana, three, 10 that attacks your opponent's face. Yup, you heard me correct. So you would play Man Crick on three. Curve it into like either Warsong Wrangler or just coin Brock Kodobane on like five, four or five. And well, guess what? You just built a big board of some pretty large minions that you can then buff by running cards like Doggy Biscuit when United and Stormwind came out or just anything. You had a lot of like high health minions that were pretty good against removal. Yeah, they didn't have that crazy of attack. They had three attack, but. You know, if you get hit by three attack minions four turns in a row, and there's like four of them, well, you're just going to take a lot of damage that way. Hunter is not a hyper aggro class. It just isn't. When you talk about aggro and Hunter, you're talking about like these kind of mid-sized minions that have, you know, typically the good stats for the cost of like a 3-4, 2-3 kind of stat line that are better into removal than like a 3-2 or a 4-3 because they have more health. And they just whittle down your opponent until you can do something that bursts and kills them from hand. Like Warsong Wrangler, 4 mana, 3, 4, Battle Cry, discover a beast from your deck. Give all copies of it plus 2 plus 1 wherever they are. You would use this with Wolpertingers because if you had like a Wolpertinger on board, it was pretty often correct to then just play Warsong Wrangler, draw your second Wolpertinger because it would then give you two 3 twos, which is really good. Or you would hit Trampling Rhino because there's only two good beasts at the time, let's be real. And you would hit your 5 mana 5-5 five, five, Rush Beast after this attacks and kills a minion, excess damage hits the enemy hero. So... If your opponent had like a one health minion and you rushed the trampling rhino into it, it's like always bigger Jormungar, where it will deal the damage face. So you would deal like six damage face. If you've had two Warsong Wranglers and then drawn both rhinos, they would be nine sevens, which were huge, huge. And it happened all the time. Uh, there was also a piercing shot, which came out during Forge of the Barons, which is a, which is Hunter Fireball. But worse, four mana, deal six damage to a minion, excess damage hits the enemy hero. Uh, I mean, it's a good card, don't get me wrong. It saw a lot of play. Just a mage just has fireball. That's the thing. Mage just has fireball. For like eight, what would it have been? Eight years? No, seven years at this point? They could have just printed fireball and hunter straight up. It's fine. It's not a big deal. It was still a good card because you, I mean, there were a lot of just one health minions that you just kill like very consistently, or you could shoot your own Wolpertingers, which was stuff that, you know, you did all the time. Uh, if you actually played the deck, you would do that all the time, but it was just perfection, perfection of a deck. I have never lost on this deck in an official tournament or official format ever. I went 8-0 with it during Collegiate playing Barons and United and Stormwind or like it was like late Barons, early Night and Stormwind. I went 8-0 with it in Collegiate. And then in other tournaments, I went 5-0 with it. I played in like two different tournaments. And I I mean, I, I never did that great in those tournaments. Don't get me wrong. But I never lost on this deck. I I think 
I, I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying this as like a joke. I think a there is a genuine argument that in all of ABC Collegiate, Activision Blizzard Collegiate, uh, that's the league I played in. You know, the main league. I think I genuinely was the best player in the entire league on this deck. My team was ranked top 10 overall in the power rankings. I'm uh, not going to say which one because I'm not going to dox myself. But if you go back to a certain point, you will you could technically figure it out through process of elimination. Uh, depend if you really know enough about me, I guess. But uh, whatever. Uh, we were top power ranked top 10 at the time. And I was 8 fucking 0 on this deck. 8 and fucking 0. There is a genuine argument to be made that of I was the best player in the fucking collegiate format on this at this one hunter deck, which is so awesome, so goddamn awesome that that's true. Anyway, I love this deck. I love it so much. It's so much fun. Uh, you you play on curve and then you hit your opponent real good in the face. Whoever could have guessed that that would be a fun hunter deck ever in their life. Then we have Mage. So I don't like most, most Mage decks. I will be honest. I'm kind of okay with, like, Seeker Mage. I don't hate Seeker Mage like a lot of people do. Uh, like, the big Spell Mage that was just in Standard, I kind of liked it. I, it. It was kind of fun to just do broken stuff, but it wasn't really that fun. The only Mage deck that I can very, very, very much say I love is Grand Finale Mage. I made a video on it, like, a year ago at this point. It didn't do well, obviously. Like a year ago, I got like 200 views. It was not, not even. I probably got less because I, I would. It probably was less. I'm gonna be honest with you. Anyway, uh, grand finale mage. So this is like one of the worst decks ever. One of the worst competent put together decks ever. Uh, you. So it it was during United and Stormwind where it was playable because of Hot Streak and Battleground Battlemaster. Hot Streak is a zero mana fire spell. Your next fire spell this turn costs two less. Battlegrounds Battlemaster is a 6-mana 5-5. Five, five. It was a 5-mana 5-5 five, five at the time, but 6-mana 5-5 five, five now. Adjacent minions have Wind Fury. Yeah, not surprising that card got nerfed. Uh, Confection Cyclone was a card that you ran in the deck. 2-mana 3-2 Elemental. Add 2-1-1 two, one, one, or 2-1-2 two, two Sugar Elementals to your hand. They're just like the, the Firefly uh, token, basically. And then Grand Finale. 8-mana Fire Spell. Summon an 8-8 eight, eight Elemental. Repeat for each Elemental you played last turn. So it was during United and Stormwind, so you would run a bunch of tradable minions because it was the most efficient way to actually cycle through your deck. And tradable minions were like just good, like standalone minions at the time. They're pretty just good. You had like a three mana three three rush with tradable. You had a four mana three four that would silence stuff like that. You had just a bunch of different cards. Uh, you try and get through your deck and draw grand finale. So you play Confection Cyclone and a bunch of other elementals on like turn four or five. Then, if you had the coin, you could do it on turn five, but typically on turn six... Wait, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so, typically, on turn six, you would play Hot Streak and Grand Finale. So, you would summon, like, four or five eight eights, and your opponent would just have to deal with it. If they could deal with it, you lost the game because that was, you know, that was it. Don't get me wrong. But if they couldn't deal with it, they either died because you had, like, four or five eight eights in play, or they died because you would give them Wind Fury with Battlegrounds Battlemaster. So, such, such a beautiful deck. Truly, truly a beautiful deck. Utter terrible dog shit deck. Do not get me wrong. One of the worst decks I've ever played in my entire life. And I, I stole it from a, from a fucking uh, Kibler video, right? I stole it from a Kibler video. It was so awesome, though. If you could get it off, it was like one of the biggest high rolls ever. Because it is quite hard to deal with like five eight eights on turn six. It was actually pretty hard at the time to deal with that, you know? So, like, sometimes it just won you the game. It did just win you the game, and it was awesome. You Like, I've even tried to play it in Wild recently. It's still terrible. Obviously, it's terrible. But it's just so much fun. It's such a fun deck. I do recommend trying it. You could put whatever you want in this deck. I'm going to be real with you, and it wouldn't matter. You could just... You can do anything. It's so much fun. Then we have Paladin. So, Holy Wrath Paladin is, like, the perfect Paladin deck, if you ask me. It has everything. It has playing for board because, well, you don't need to deal that much damage to your opponent's face to set up the combo. So you just play for board really well. It's great. It has a, it would run uh, buff cards because, well, buffing your minions and Paladin is a fun thing to do. It ran a lot of healing because of cards like Deputization Aura. It had strong board impact and board clear because of Showdown and Prismatic Beam. And then it had a guaranteed uh, seven mana or five if you discounted it by with holy cowboy uh combo to deal 25 damage to your opponent's face 
So you only had to deal like five damage. This was, you know, before Renathal was reverted and in every deck. So, you know, now you have to deal 15 pretty much. But at the time, during Showdown in the Badlands, like after Order in the Court was nerfed, they it was just so, so peak. This deck went from completely unplayable garbage to, in one expansion, a genuine meta playable deck. Obviously, it got like 50 nerfs in a row because of standard and like, you know, Showdown was broken, uh, Prismatic Beam was broken, Deputization Aura was broken. Uh, all this different stuff was like way too strong in standard. So like, yeah, like, yeah. But once this got, if, if this gets fully reverted, like I'm talking Prismatic Beam level reverted, this could be one of the best decks in the game again. Genuinely. There is a world where that's possible. Prismatic Beam will likely not get reverted, though. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, yeah, Prismatic Beam at 8 was a, is a strong card. Don't get me wrong. Prismatic Beam at 8 is still a strong card. But at 7, oh my lord. Zero mana, deal 3 damage to all enemies because it's uh, 7 mana, cost 1 less for, uh, for each enemy minion, then deal 3 damage to all enemies. What the hell was that? Now it's 8 mana and doesn't hit uh, enemy's face. Anyway, let's get into the cards. Holy Wrath, if you don't know by now, I don't know how, if you've ever played Hearthstone, Holy Wrath is such an iconic card, is a 5-mana Holy Spell, draw a card, and deal damage equal to its cost. So you draw things like Shaval the Tiger, 25-mana, 7-5, Beast, Divine Shield, Rush, Lifesteal, costs 1 less for each mana you've spent on spells. So Holy Wrath synergizes very well with Shaval the Tiger, because it's 5-mana, deal 25 damage. Technically, it's 7 mana, but it's also 5 mana if you run the card Holy Cowboy, which is a 3 mana, 4, 3, Battle Cry, your next Holy Spell costs 2 less. So, Order in the Court used to be a 2 mana, reorder your deck from highest cost to lowest cost, draw a card, but then it was nerfed to just reorder your deck, and you wouldn't draw a card anymore. So, you would not draw Shrival the Tiger after you played Order in the Court, which meant if you played Holy Wrath right after, you were always drawing Shrival the Tiger. Always and always dealing 25 damage. Then, you have Deputization Aura. Three mana, holy spell, your leftmost minion has plus one attack and lifesteal last three turns. It used to be plus three attack, and it was just one of the most efficient, uh, like, healing spells in the entire game. It was so good at fighting for board. It's one of my favorite cards of the expansion. It's just really fun to play around. Uh, sometimes, like, when this card came out, a lot of people were, like, experimenting with ways to play, like, a charge paladin, where you would, uh, because Deputization Aura is effectively three mana give, like, all your charge minions plus three attack. If and you could set it up a turn before, it was actually really fun. I love Deputization Aura. It's really, really a fun card to use. I'm being so honest with you. I hope that it gets reverted so badly because it's not playable in wild anymore. It was a, just a really good card. It was just solid. And you know, standard gets things nerfed, and we have to suffer. We have to suffer for it as a format. Uh, this last like rotation has been so bad because every deck now just like keeps getting nerfed and keeps getting nerfed out of playability and it's so fucking sad dude it's so sad whoever could have guessed ever could have guessed that the guy who likes pressing the hero power button a lot really likes reno priest whoever could have guessed that uh we have raza the chain five mana five five battle cry if your deck has no duplicates your hero power costs zero this game Rosal the Chained was so unbelievably broken when it uh, when Shadow Reaper Anduin came out that when it rotated to Wild, they nerfed it so that your hero power would cost one. And then when they unnerfed Raza of the Chained just randomly one day, I don't even remember when it was at this point, uh, it instantly was the best, instantly Reno Priest was the best deck in the game. Instantly after Raza was averted. And it was the best deck in the format for like, over a year or two, if I remember correctly, it was so strong for so long. And like people like Reno Priest, that's the thing. So it's one of those times where like when the best deck in the game, people were just kind of like, oh, okay. They, they didn't care that much. Cause like Reno Priest, when it was the best deck in the game, yeah, it was oppressive in the late game. Do not get me wrong. But it's early game tools kind of sucked balls. And like you, it had like a really weak mid game, really, really weak mid game. It's early game tools weren't the worst ever. It's just like they weren't good enough to make up for the fact that it's mid game was so terrible because you're typically just playing like a five mana five five with an effect. Lotheb, Raza, things like that. You didn't have that many great cards that it has nowadays, like Raza the Resealed. Five mana five five battle cry for the rest of the game. Your hero power refreshes whenever you play a card. Wow, it's almost like Raza synergizing super well with Raza. I know, I know. It's almost like they did that on purpose. 
Uh, you, you, of course, you know, of course, it runs cards like Zephyrus the Great, Reno Jackson, Reno Lone Ranger. Uh, it used to run Shadow Reaper and Wind. It doesn't need to anymore because of Raza of the Resealed and Dark Bishop Benedictus. Dark Bishop Benedictus gives you the Shadow Form Hero Power. Uh, so Anduin doesn't matter anymore. It's so crazy that Anduin came out, turned Raza from being a terrible legendary into a broken legendary, and then Raza power creeps Anduin. You can't, you can't make this shit up, bro. Uh, it runs Zephyrus, two mana, three, two elemental. Battlecry, if your deck has no duplicates, wish for the perfect card. Zephyrus is one of those cards that's like, it's so hard to hate him because like, he's just such a staple iconic card that like, he's been around for so long that I just can't hate him anymore. Like, yeah, he's broken. Yeah, he's not fair. Yeah, he is bullshit and gives you the bad cards sometimes. And it's annoying, but like, it's Zephyrus, man. He's just, he just is Hearthstone at this point. Like, Zephyrus will be good until the fucking sky falls, dude. I, if Zephyrus stops being a playable card in Hearthstone, I don't know what's happened. Truly. I do not know what has happened. And then it runs tech cards, right? You would run things like Lotheb or Boom Pistol Bully and or Razor Scale. Three mana, two, four, Dragon. Cards can't cost less than two. Razor Scale is so fucking strong and wild. There's always going to be degenerate wild decks that try and play cards for zero mana. There always will be. Guess what card stops that? Razor Scale. It's crazy that Razor Scale was fucking terrible in standard. Unplayable in standard. Until, guess what? There was a rogue deck that wanted to play a billion zero cost cards. Shocking. Shocking. When Razor Scale is a strong card, that means there is something wrong with the game. That's just... For, for standard, that's what that means. For wild, Razor Scale being strong is just like good for the game like you need a card like razor scale to exist and it's good for the game i love razor scale razor scale is probably my favorite dragon of all time as well so i, li I like talking about it oh i miss i miss millsbane my heart goes out to millsbane if you did not play in like 2017 2018 2019 ish era uh wild hearthstone you don't know about millsbane I guess 2019 wouldn't have been it, actually. Uh, no, it, it, it died in 2018. Sorry, not 2019. 2018 is when it died. It died during Roscon's Rumble. So it was. So when Big Priest was like made into a thing during, uh, what is it? Knights of the Frozen Throne. Uh, later, Kingsbane came out in Kobolds and Catacombs. One expansion later. And, well, suddenly you had this card, Leeching Poison, which was two mana at the time to give your weapon, uh, just give your weapon life seal. Uh, it synergized really well with Kingsbane, so you could give your Kingsbane permanent lifesteal. Uh, of course, it got nerfed to one mana, give your weapon lifesteal this turn. Not even because Kingsbane was too strong and wild or anything, where, which is what I'm about to talk about, but because it was too strong and standard. You would play an aggro-style Kingsbane deck because raid the docks, or raid the... Oh god, what is it called? I can't remember what it's called. It's a three mana rogue spell, draw two pirates, combo, draw a weapon. Uh, that made, and like all the pirates that came out in Roscon's Rumble, stuff like that, made Kingsbane too strong and standard as like an aggro deck. So they had to nerf Leeching Poison, I guess, instead of nerfing Kingsbane, which is what people wanted because, you know, it's a legendary and Leeching Poison is common, whatever. So they nerfed it, right? The whole idea behind uh, Millsbane and Wild, though, is that you would run Cold Light Oracle and you would run cards, of course, to buff your Kingsbane. And since, well, Big Priest couldn't really apply that much pressure overall, you would just hit your face into their minions and heal it off. And then you would play Cold Light Oracles and bounce them to make them mill cards. So they would run out of ways to resummon their boards and ways to, and just lose their minions and things like that. So, I mean, like, it, it's not flashy. This is one of the, like, it's not a flashy deck. It wasn't anything special. It was just really, really good at beating Big Priest and not even that much else at the time. It had to run some really bad cards. Like, I'm talking 4 mana, 5, 4, Naga Pirate, Naga Corsair. Battle Cry, give your weapon plus 1 attack. This card is so bad. Unbelievably bad. But by 20, like 2018 standards, that was the one of the best options you had to buff your Kingsbane. I'm not fucking joking. You had, like, Tinker Sharp Sword Oil. You had, uh, like, what is it called? Like, the Barber Bot? Uh, the two mana, three, two mech that gives your weapon plus one attack and like Tinker Star Sword Oil and like Deadly Poison. And that was it to give your weapon like good attack. I, I think the deck even ran Captain Greenskin, like unironically. There was just nothing to like nothing to buff your weapon. But, you know, it got up enough 
that you could play Kingsbane, you could give it lifesteal, and you could hit your opponent's minions. And that was it. That's how you controlled the board. It was awesome. It was so fucking awesome. This, like, I think that if, Le I, I truly think that if Leeching Poison never got nerfed, Kingsbane would be the most broken card ever. Bar none. I do not think that a Kingsbane Rogue in Wild today with unnerfed Leeching Poison could lose. I think that it would be impossible to lose on that deck. Like, the only way you could ever lose is, like, the current fucking pirate demon hunter that can deal 30 damage to you on turn three that is the only way that or like otk decks that could somehow survive until like their otk on like turn five that is the only possible way you could ever beat king's Bane with permanent leeching poison if it still existed because they have the uh what's it called they have paralytic poison which came out in uh, forge of the barons which is one mana spell gain one attack and give your hero immune while attacking they have that shit they have so much card draw so much like it's so insane. Like, Legion Poison nerf saved the game. Actually saved the game. I think Hearthstone, without a Legion Poison nerf, would be unplayable. Wild Hearthstone would be genuinely unplayable. That's how fucking broken it would be. And, like, what are you going to do? Run Sticky Finger? Oh, the, if, if there was an actual meta of Kingsbane being good and Sticky Finger being a good counter card to Kingsbane, the Kingsbane players would just run another copy of Sticky Finger. I want to point that out. That's just what they would do. They would Sticky Finger it back. Like, I'm not joking. That's what would happen. Anyway, let's move on to a shot. Let's get ready to throw it back and laugh. Ah, ah, ah. I thought, dude, Shaman sucks balls. I spent an actual good 30 minutes trying to rack my brain about like any Shaman deck I've ever liked. Ever in the history of this game. Any Shaman deck I've ever actually liked and actually wanted to play. And I can't think of a single one. Ever. Shaman is so fucking boring. I'm sorry. Like... What, what do you have? Even Shaman? Oh, dude, that's like the most brainless deck ever. Odd Shaman? Oh, yeah, it was good for like a month and then got fucking nerfed out of nowhere. There's nothing ever interesting about Shaman. I'm sorry, dude. Like, what do you want me to say? What can I possibly say? Oh, Frog Shaman was like kind of a little bit cool and then it got like gutted into unplayability. Oh, well, that's not great. There's no Shaman deck I've ever liked. Like, even Pirate Shaman, even though I like, you know, Pirate Demon Hunter, Pirate Shaman's boring. It's not nearly as good. It's just really fucking boring. And then we have... War ah! Ah! I got you again! Oh, I got you again! Yeah, we have Warlock. Uh, you know, everything I said about, like, Shaman, how I just don't like any Shaman decks, like, ever? Yeah, that's how I feel about Warlock. Yeah, like, Zoo Warlock is kind of fun because it's an aggro deck, but I don't fucking actually like Zoo Warlock that much. There's just never been a warlock deck that's interesting ever in the history of this game they're all scam cheat decks that don't actually play the game and use like a, a like a cheat resource either health or discarding to that other classes just can't fucking do resources that classes can't use so warlock just gets more powerful cards for no fucking reason so they just cheat every game they actually just cheat what is fun about that i, I there's literally nothing fun about it what am i supposed to fucking do Okay, now we're in a warrior. So I do actually like a real warrior deck. So in 2017, 2018 era, Wild Hearthstone, I'm bringing it back up again, we had Pirate Warrior. So this Pirate Warrior was like fresh off the, the patches nerf post revert. You had a lot of like really old cards because they didn't print uh, Descent of Dragons just yet. They didn't print uh, United in Stormwind. So Pirate Warrior was still running on some pretty old cards. So you had things like Nazoth's First Mate. One mana, one, one pirate, equip a one, three rusty hook. Of course, you would have patches as well, but I'm not going to put patches on this because why would I? You had... Uh, blood sail cultist which is a three mana three four pirate if you control another pirate give your weapon plus one plus one so you could give either your nazoth's first mate weapon plus one plus one you could give an upgrade weapon if you had to use upgrade for the weapon plus one plus one or you could give death's bite plus one plus one death's bite is a four mana four two weapon with death rattle deal one damage all minions it wasn't that crazy as a death rattle it was just a four mana four two weapon which as far as i know there weren't any other at the time. I could be wrong, but I don't think there were any other at the time. Uh, like, I think the only other option would have been, like, Arcanite Reaper. Because this was post Fiery War Axe being nerfed. If Fiery War Axe wasn't nerfed, of course we would have ran Fiery War Axe. Because, well, 2 mana 3-2 weapon was really fucking strong. It still kind of is. I think that, like, Blizzard cannot print a 2 mana 3-2 weapon with an effect. I think they straight up cannot do it. It is way too strong. 
Uh, anyway, where was I? So, Death Spite, yeah, it was good as just a weapon. It was great to be buffed. It sometimes was useful on board for, you know, killing minions, but its main use was with Frothing Berserker. Three mana, two, four. Whenever a minion takes damage, gain plus one attack. Frothing Berserker, the classic card, saw real meta play in a real meta deck at this stage in Hearthstone, like four full years after it came out. I am not joking. Frothing Berserker was so strong in Pyro Warrior. You would have real games where you would have a Frothing Berserker just tempoed out on three. You would have Death Spite, maybe the Froth, and then, or sorry, yeah, and then the Frothing Berserker would just live. Your Death Spite would pop on like your minions, your opponent's minions, and then the Frothing Berserker would just have like 15 attack. Real, like, maybe not 15, probably closer to, like, 10, let's be honest here. But real games. That happened in real games. I am not joking. It was so fucking awesome. If you don't know who Control is, Control is a wild player that, you know, used to play the game, doesn't really anymore. He used to be a streamer. Look up his YouTube channel. There will be a video that is, like, 25-0 and 0 on Pirate Warrior. This guy is, like, the best fucking Pirate Warrior player ever. He, he was playing Pirate Warrior when it was, like, a terrible, unplayable deck, and he was playing it in, like, top 10, top 20 legend. I'm not joking. No one will ever be as good on that deck as that guy was. And you have to you have to watch the the shit that that deck was doing like you have to go and rewatch like watch that video if you haven't i'm be so honest with you it's so so awesome i love pirate warrior but yeah that's gonna be it for me if you guys enjoyed make sure to like comment and subscribe tell me think down below what are your favorite decks what's your favorite deck for each class do you like any of the classes that i are like the decks for the classes i mentioned do you also think shaman and warlock are really fucking boring and don't have any fun decks i know i do Tell me down below. I'd actually love to hear it. I love talking about Hearthstone decks that I do like. It's more fun. It is more fun than talking about things I don't like. I know. It's shocking. I know. Uh, but yeah, that's the end for me. I'll see you all next time. Peace. Shadows are rising again. Darker than they've ever been.